took our place. Sing it out. The God of redemption he opened the way. The day you gave your life, it seemed to fill you in our eyes. But the story rolled away as you walked out. Perfection, he became sin. So grateful for that, Lord. The God of salvation, he changed everything. The day he gave your life, it seemed to fill you in our eyes. But the story rolled away as you walked out. Because you live, sing right to him. Because you live, our hope begins. Yes, Lord. Because you live, our song will never end. Yes, Lord. Because you live, now we can live. This changes everything. This changes. Oh. So how many here have been to a birthday party? All you people have never been to a birthday party? You're kidding me. <sighs> okay. Whose birthday is like within the next couple of days? Okay. Can you invite everybody over so they can actually go to a birthday party? Because what are you doing at a birthday party? You sing happy birthday, and then they blow out the candles, and everybody claps and applauds, and we celebrate their life. Today is a celebration, church. There are, yes, it is a celebration. There are five people who love Jesus and have been following him, and today they're making a public declaration that they are devoted to Jesus. That is huge. Eternal, eternal consequences there. Isn't that amazing? And they're good consequences, not bad consequences, great consequences. So on the count of three, we're just going to applaud to worship our Savior. We're going to erupt in praise. Ready? One, two. Two, three. Woo! Lord Jesus, you are awesome! You are awesome, Lord! Oh, thank you, Jesus, because the battle is yours. Thank you, Jesus! Oh, Lord. 
sees the battle, you see my victory. So true. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I'm safe with you. So when I fight, I fight on my knees. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees. With my hands lifted high, there you go. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. With every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. God, but that'll belong to you. So good, Lord. And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you.
to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the tomb. Praise the Father, praise the Son. One voice, let's sing. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God. the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross thank you Lord for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for my sake you died let's sing pray Sing his praise. And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit made a flame Now this gospel truth of old Shall not be or shall not fade By His blood his name, my is free with my every for the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Sing it if you need it. And I exalt thee, worthy Lord, you're worthy. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh Lord, sing it. 
sing it, church. I exalt thee. Declare it. I Heavenly Father, we thank you that you here, are here with us. Thank you that we don't sing uh, into space. Thank you that we don't celebrate a dead God, but a living one. So we just say, have your way here this morning as we celebrate what you are already doing in the lives of us as your church body and say, God, keep doing more. We give you reign as our king. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may all be seated. So good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Kobe. I am the children's pastor here at Hopewell. And uh, I don't make it up top here too often, but it's really good to see you all that I'm up here today. Um, I want to say a big welcome to those of you who are watching online. Thank you so much for tuning in. And to those of you who are first-time guests here, welcome as well. On your way in, you should have received uh, one of these guys. These are our bulletins. Uh, on one side, there's a tear, actually on both sides, there's a tear off on the bottom. On the one side, you can put some of your information and you can either drop that in the offering box on your way out or uh, we would much prefer if you could take that to the welcome desk that'll be on your right on your way out just so we can uh, say hi, get to know you a little bit and welcome you to Hopewell. Uh, on the other side, there is a spot for anyone who wants to to put down some prayer requests. Uh, anything big or small you can put on there, we would love to pray with you guys uh, for what is going on in your lives. But if you haven't caught on yet, today is Baptism Sunday, and uh, it's a celebration, so we're so glad that you're here with us. Uh, it's also a family service. We have uh, a bunch of kids getting baptized this morning, so we wanted to be sure we had all of the kiddos up here uh, to see and celebrate with their friends, and uh, so make sure you're welcoming our, our younger members up here with us this morning. But uh, like I said, it's a celebration, and what is a celebration without ice cream. So after the service today, on your way out under the portico, there's an ice cream machine. We have free ice cream for everyone who wants it. And uh, for any of you who are lactose intolerant and would not be able to have that, we have some Italian ice from Rita's as well. So uh, that's for those of you who cannot have dairy. I also get to tell you about something exciting coming up, which is life groups. Life groups is what we call our small groups here at Hopewell. And uh, life groups are a really big part of what it means to be a part of a community in a meaningful way and to be a part of God's family. So uh, it's a pretty big deal for us here. And that's what made it a pretty heavy blow when we were really limited in what we could do uh, when COVID was coming through. We were really limited in the small groups that we could have going on. So uh, that makes us extra, extra excited to announce that in the fall we are relaunching our life groups. It's a big deal. Uh, but in order to do that, uh, we actually need leaders and hosts for those groups. So uh, we uh, need people who are just willing to lead, put their name on it, and say, hey, I'll, I'll run the thing. And um, we also need hosts who are willing to open up their homes just to have people come in. And uh, even if you're not the leader, you don't have to be the leader and the host at the same time. You can do one or the other. Uh, and that is a huge blessing to uh, this church family. 
You also don't need to have experience in doing this before. You don't need to be some spiritual powerhouse, right? This is something we provide training, we provide support, and uh, we just want to make this happen for you and for the rest of the, the church family here. Uh, other than that, we also, uh, some of you may know that we have become a uh, drop spot for the leftover food from the Wawa that got put in up the road. So we are tasked with distributing that to those who are needy in our community. Uh, but we have some leftovers this week. So uh, if you want any of that, you can head down to the kitchen after the service, and it is in the freezer down there. You can grab whatever is in there. We need to clean it out to make room for the next stuff coming in. Uh, if you came uh, ready to give uh, your tithes and offerings this morning, we have boxes in the back on your way out stuck on the wall there. You can drop them right in those slots, or you can give online through any of the ways on there on the screen. That's through our app or through our church website. And uh, we just want to say a big thank you for all of you who are just sowing into the kingdom and what God is doing through uh, our church here at Hopewell. So without further ado, if you could turn your attention to the screens, we have some video announcements. Good morning, Hopewell. We have a lot of great opportunities for connection around here. Our senior high summer camp has come and gone, but we have two more camp opportunities coming up this summer. Junior high camp is coming up in July. Hopewell summer camps are a great opportunity for students to engage with worship, group activities, and Christ-centered chapels. For more information and to register, you can pick up a brochure in the lobby outside the sanctuary or the lobby outside the New Life Center. If you're looking for a way to be a part of Hopewell in a bigger way, there are many opportunities for you to partner with us. You can check out our website and see listings for volunteer positions and ways you can serve the people around you. Different ministries need different forms of help. Some are seasonal, some are as needed, and others are year-round. What better way to emulate Christ's servant heart than by serving those around you? To learn more about what's happening at Hopewell, check out the bulletin or visit hopewellchurch.org. And remember, live well, love well, hope well. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't know, my name is Gary Buck. I'm the lead pastor here at Hopewell. And again, today is Baptism Sunday. It's a very exciting Sunday for us. It's a thrilling Sunday. It's also a very important Sunday. Baptism is a really important part of the Christian walk and the Christian faith. Jesus himself, of course, he was baptized. And he also, in the Great Commission, commanded that we be baptized. So it's also a command. Now, let me just say right off the bat here that if you have never been baptized or maybe you were baptized as an infant, um, but it wasn't a personal decision of yours. Um, we, now, we do have people who are signed up to be baptized today, but if you've never been baptized and you're like, you know what? During the course of the service, you're thinking, I might want to get baptized. We're making space for you. We, anybody can get baptized this morning. So if that's you and you feel that the Lord's tugging in your heart, uh, we have T-shirts. Uh, Pastor Wayne's up here. He's in the blue shirt down here in the corner. If at any time during the service you're like, I think I might want to get baptized, just come and just tap on the shoulder and say, hey, I'm going to get baptized. And he'll give you a T-shirt. we got towels for you. Uh, don't let the idea that your car is going to get a little wet on the way home ruin your, your Sunday of getting baptized. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful decision that part of every believer. So just, just pray about that and consider it as we go through the service. All right, so I just wanted to, to address a few things before we jump into the baptisms themselves. Why is baptism important, and what's the purpose of it? Number one is this. Baptism must be a personal choice. It's not a choice that someone else makes for you. So biblically speaking, uh, baptism is not a decision that your friends make for you or your parents make for you. In Acts 2.38, the Apostle Peter said this. He said, repent. And be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then in Matthew 3.11, it says this. It says, I baptize you with water. This is John the Baptist talking. He says, I baptize you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I. I am not worthy to remove his sandals. He himself will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, what's the similar theme between both those verses? Repentance. And so we see this connection is that repentance means what? It means to change direction. I said it before that when, when, you're, when you're walking through life and you know that you're heading away from God, repentance doesn't mean you just say, I'm sorry for what I've done that's wrong, uh, or God forgive me. Repentance is that, and it means you're changing direction and now heading the other way toward God, toward his heart, and toward his best for you. 
That's what repentance is. And so we see in these two verses that repentance and baptism are connected. They're joined at the hip. You, you, you don't get baptized unless you repented. And if you, are, if you repent, then you should be baptized. And so I want to say maybe at the church that you, you grew up at, uh, you were baptized as an infant. That was my story. I was baptized as an infant. I had a little bit of a, a sprinkling of water. I don't know if these are water gun or what happened, but they sprinkled something, some kind of liquid on me, flicked it on me, and boom, I was baptized. Um, but here's the thing is that we see in the scriptures here is that can a baby change direction in their lives? They can't even change their own diapers. You know, babies have, they can't make a decision to change from who they were. It's a, it's, it is a personal choice. I know that um, uh, uh, many of you grew up, whether Catholic or Lutheran, and they baptize babies because they believe that you're literally cleansed of your sins through water. And the baby, in, in the Catholic tradition, of course, well, the, the, the belief is that an unbaptized baby who dies will actually go into a state of limbo where God is not present. Um, but baptism for infants is not found anywhere in the scriptures. And I believe that if something isn't in the Bible, that we should not build our whole theology around it. So when I was a young adult, I felt led to be baptized uh, again because I felt like that was a decision that I needed to make for myself. And so right here in this church, I was baptized as an adult uh, because I felt like, you know what, I am now making this decision. Uh, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. It's not a decision my parents made for me. And so it was a wonderful day. It was a huge celebration. And we had a picnic afterwards. It was a lot of fun. But that brings me to the second point is this that the act of baptism itself is not what saves us. It is the public declaration that our faith is in the cleansing and saving work of Christ. Now, what's interesting is that there are many examples of people in the New Testament where they put their faith in Christ, and the scriptures are very clear, and they tell us that they were then saved. They weren't baptized. It wasn't like they were, they were baptized and they said, now I'm saved. Now I'm going to heaven. That's not how it worked. They were saved before they were baptized. But we also see examples of when they were saved, they immediately did what? Immediately were baptized. When Peter was standing before all these people and he was first filled with the Holy Spirit right after Pentecost, it says 3,000 people came to faith in Christ, were saved that day, and all 3,000 were baptized. It was, it was, in other words, it goes hand in hand. You're saved and you're baptized. Now, why do some people believe that baptism is what saves you? Mark 16, 16 says this. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. So if you just take that by itself, that sounds like you got to be baptized to be saved. But again, we want to keep, and I've heard this, this referred to, but we got to keep reading the whole verse. The whole verse in context, Mark 16, 16, again says this, the whole thing. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So what is the main component here? Belief. Belief, we know that we are saved by grace through what? Faith. That is what saves us. And so what we're saying here is that the baptism corresponds with the person who believes. If you believe in God, if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then your natural response out of obedience to Christ, and because it's a response to your faith, is that you then will choose to be baptized. But it's not the baptism itself that saves you. So Jesus commands it again. He says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And so I would encourage any of you here this morning that if you love Jesus Christ, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, and not just as a religion, but you really love Jesus Christ and what he's done for you, and you haven't been baptized yet, I would encourage you to consider getting baptized, whether it's this morning or the next time we do this. Or we'll, we'll find, we'll find a, a, a pond down the road somewhere. Because remember, in, in, in the book of Acts, we see that there's Philip and the Ethiopian, and, and Philip's sharing with the Ethiopian uh, the, the message of salvation from Isaiah. And then Philip says what? He's like, well, I, I believe it. He's like, he's like and, and there's some water here. Why shouldn't I get baptized? And so that's kind of our spirit behind this as well. There's water here. Why shouldn't you get baptized? So baptism, number three, is this. Baptism is a public, symbolic display of our own death, burial, and resurrection with Christ. You see, baptism is not some kind of magical or incantation that you perform that's kind of like, you know, hocus pocus, now you're saved. 
That's not what it is. Baptism is symbolic of the saving work of Christ. Romans 6, 3 to 5 says this. The Apostle Paul, who was saved, said this. He said, Or are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Did you know that Jesus himself, when he had to go through the death and on his death on the cross and all the things that he went into went through, he actually called that a baptism. And so what we see here is that baptism is symbolic of everything Jesus went through. He died and was buried, and then he rose from the dead, which history proves. And so we see he, he died, was buried, and rose from the dead. And what, what Paul's saying here is that we too are baptized with Jesus. That means everything he went through. So what the Christian does, and so if you're here today and you're trying to figure out, I don't even know what I believe, or maybe I grew up a Christian, or I'm just, I, I'm wandering, I don't know where I am right now. And so what I would encourage you is that wherever you are in your walk with life, this is what God's calling us to do. He's calling us to die to ourselves, to our selfishness, to who we were, and put it to death, because that's what it takes. Put it to death, and then you bury it. See, that's, that's the key there, is that when Jesus died and he was put in the grave, you know, that, that's symbolic of, of, of what we are to do because you, we are, though, to bury ourselves, leave who we were in the grave, and then as Jesus was resurrected, so too then do we then today live the resurrected life. We are not just called to, to live a life on our own. We are called to live a life as Christians in resurrection power. Romans 8.11 says this, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. And so you've heard it said that the same power that rose Jesus from the dead can live in you. If you put your faith in Christ, that same power will live in you. And I know a lot of us go around living life like we feel like we are, we have no power. We have no strength. Now, I don't know, how many of you in here have a hybrid car? Anybody? Okay, a few of you. We're getting there. All right, I don't have one. But, you know, I, I, I've, I've, I've driven in one. And so the, typical, the idea of a hybrid car is that it runs on part gasoline, and you also have to charge it electrically. So it runs on gasoline, but it also runs on electricity. And, you know, I, I was thinking, like, I, I've driven both kind of cars before, and I, I tend to think that a lot of times the gasoline ones have a little more power, but also these are maybe better for the environment or save some money in different ways. And, uh, and so, but I think that sometimes we as Christians live like hybrids. I think sometimes we, we say, okay, we're going to drink of Jesus. He says, I'm the living water. We drink of him, and we take him into our lives. We take him into our spirit. We read the word of God. We pray to him. We talk to him. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. And we just we have this feeding sense or the drinking of the living water, and, and, and that, that's what feeds us. But then what do we do? We're hybrid sometimes, and we go and we kind of now we drink and eat from what the world says is important and what the world values. And we, we start becoming these two different power sources inside ourselves. And then we wonder why sometimes we have that 2 o'clock caffeine crash, right? And so we're believers in God and yet and followers of Christ, and yet sometimes we're just like, ah, oh, I just feel like I'm just so exhausted all the time. And so I've been there, guys. I've been there, you know, in the, in, recently. And so what happens is we can get around, we can look impressive, but, but, we, but we're, what are we eating from? What are we, what are we really taking in? And so I would encourage you, brothers and sisters, if you're a follower of Jesus, we must not be hybrids. I believe that we, as followers of Christ, have been called to be fully empowered by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is who we're called to be. We're not called to, to drain our, our things from the world and put that into ourselves. We're called to live fully empowered with the resurrection of Christ. That is, that is the life that God wants for us. You don't need anything else except for Jesus in your life. And God has called us to be all in. If you look at our baptism shirts, that's what they say in the front. It says all in. Because it's not one foot in the water, one foot out. It's all in. We are not called to be hybrids. And, you know, I, as I was thinking about this, what does it mean to be baptized? What does it mean to be a follower of Christ? What is, what is baptism? 
I think in a lot of ways, it's like, uh, for those of you who are married, it's like wearing a wedding ring, isn't it? You know, a wedding ring is symbolic of our devotion, of our, the love and commitment that we've made to our spouse. And so what we do with baptism is that it's also a public display, in a sense, of our commitment and our devotion to Jesus Christ. And, you know, he calls us, the church, his bride. And so, you know, if you think about it, um, if, if somebody was to take off their wedding band, and I, I talked to someone who, 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 who did this. He would say, yeah, when I go out in public or on trips, I just like to take off my wedding band because it just, I, I like the idea of just kind of like, not I'm not going to do anything, but just this idea that I like to be out there and have options and just feel like I can flirt with people. And I think sometimes we can do that and have the same mentality with Jesus. Is that the, the second we want to say, you know what, I don't know. It's almost like, you know, imagine if you were saying, well, I'm going to take off my wedding ring depending on where I go because I'm kind of ashamed of the way my wife laughs. Or I'm kind of ashamed of the way my husband tells stories. I'm just going to take that wedding ring off just when I go into this setting. But do we do that with Jesus? You know, do we do that where we say, okay, I'm a Christian in church or I'm a Christian at work, I'm a Christian at home, but when I hang out with my friends doing this, that's when I take my wedding ring off. But the point is that when we do baptism, it's... It, I, when I married my wife, and I, and I had that wedding ceremony, we put that ring on each other's fingers, that was not the first day that I told my wife I loved her. She already knew what I felt about her, and to me, baptism's the same way. Is that when we are baptized, that shouldn't be the first time that you tell Jesus, I love you. You don't come out of the water and say for the first time, oh, Jesus, I love you. The baptism is an outward display, like a wedding ring, of the commitment that we've already made in our hearts to Jesus Christ. And so, brothers and sisters, we should never be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Romans 1.16 says this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Any of you remember that, that Newsboy song, Not Ashamed, like back in the 90s? I like kids to know who, who uh, the Newsboys are, but that was their first big hit. Not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to let you know. It was, it, was, it was like the anthem of like a whole generation. And so we must be called also to be not ashamed. Like a year later, the, the, the DC Talk wrote Jesus Freak. It was, there was this big impulse of like, like, this was like, we cannot be ashamed. We must be proud to be followers of Jesus Christ. How could we be ashamed of the one who died my death, who took my shame and gave me life? So we say this, if Jesus laid down and took our shame, certainly we can stand for him unashamed. A while back, I remember, I'm, I'm, as many of you know, I'm a big Philadelphia Eagles fan, and a couple years ago, they lost a very disappointing playoff game. And, uh, and I remember the next day, I woke up, and I opened up my drawer to put on a t-shirt, and I saw the Eagles t-shirt there, and I'm like, it's a bunch of losers. <laughs> and I just, I just couldn't put it on. Why? Because I was ashamed, really, of the team. And, uh, and again, I wonder if we ever do that with Jesus. Why are we ashamed to wear our faith, our faith on our sleeves? Is Jesus, here's the question, is Jesus a loser? Is Jesus a loser? No. Look at Revelation 19.11. I know we went through a series of Revelation, but look at this picture. It's a vision of Jesus. It says, then I saw heaven opened, and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True. This is Jesus. For he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title was the Word of God. The armies of heaven, dressed in the finest of pure white linen, followed him on white horses. And from his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty, like juice flowing from a wine press. And on his robe at his thigh was written this title, King of all kings and Lord of all lords. Does that sound like a loser? No. And so I encourage you, don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not just for those of you getting baptized here today, but wherever you go, don't be ashamed. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And there's no one we should be more proud of. There's no, one who, there's no one who loved this world more than Jesus. And that's who we represent. And so 
we're going to celebrate now with those who have made this decision to declare to the world that I'm all in, that I am unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so what we're going to do now is that we, ha like, we have about five people who are being baptized. We've already, you know, again, signed up ahead of time. Um, and so they're going to be coming up one by one. And as they, I encourage you, uh, uh, as they go into the water and they come out of the water, this is a celebration. I encourage you to clap, cheer, cheer them on. This is, this is family time. We're celebrating with them uh, that they made this decision to follow Jesus Christ. So this is a celebration time. So please clap, cheer along with them. The worship team is just going to be playing along uh, as a sense of celebrating as well. Um, we're just worshiping God in everything that we do here. This is all for his glory. It's not for ours. It's for his. And, uh, and again, it, 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 after, after the fifth person, if any of you uh, want to be baptized today and you want to plan on it, we, we, have, we have got the time. So uh, we would love to celebrate with you and make that decision. But again, if you want to do that, just come see Pastor Wayne in the corner here. Uh, to be baptized. And then after they're done being baptized, uh, B Becky Jones, our lead intercessor, is just going to pray over them and share a blessing with them as well. So um, we're just really excited about celebrating together. This is a family time. So let me just pray a blessing over this time. Lord, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to bless you, to honor you. And I pray that you would just do something in every heart here today. Is choosing to be baptized. To follow your command because they love you and they honor you. And Jesus, for all of us, may we be unashamed. And Lord, if there's anyone here who hasn't yet been baptized, or maybe they want to rededicate their life to the Lord, Lord, I just pray that you would just stir in their hearts to do so. There's water here. And you are here, Jesus. We bless you in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, I'll invite the first person to come on up to be baptized. Penelope Lasitra. I became a Christian when I was four years old. I was sitting at the dining room table with my dad and siblings. We were doing devotions as part of our school, like we did every day, and we were talking about Jesus and what he did for us. My dad asked us if we wanted to give our lives to Christ, and we all said yes. I definitely can feel him helping me and comforting me through scripture and people. I've thought a lot about baptism and what the Bible said about it. So last year, I decided to do it as a public statement of my commitment to Christ. Amelia Henschel. I'm 10 years old. I was eight when I asked Jesus into my heart, and I've been waiting two whole years to be baptized. I know it's important to love Jesus because he died on the cross for us and loves us, even if we sin. Not just that, though. There are many other reasons I love him. If I'm worried about something, I pray to Jesus, and he helps me get through those tough times. 
I also want to be an example to my friend and her family. They believe that Jesus is just a fairy tale. I think it's important for her to know that Jesus loves her. Sometimes I also think about my Grammy and Pop-Pop. My Pop-Pop died when I was five, and my Grammy died when I was eight. I'm sad that they aren't with us today, but I know that they knew Jesus and are safe in heaven with him. I just know that Jesus loves me and always will. is Ainsley Orman. When I was about four years old, I understood that Jesus is the Son of God. During this past year, I've learned a lot about God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Coming to church and hearing Pastor Kobe's messages, attending Awana each week, and going to my school have all helped me understand Jesus' love for me. I started thinking about how much I love him and want to follow his ways. One day, I felt like the Holy Spirit told me that it was time to get baptized and let everyone know that I am choosing to follow Jesus. Just a few years ago, I remember standing up here when my mom was baptized and thinking that I wanted to do that one day. And now, here I am. My favorite Bible verse has always been John 3:16, Because I know God loves me and he gave his son to die for me, I'm choosing to follow him. My name is Maddie Berg, and this is my story. When I was four years old, I prayed with my mom and dad and asked Jesus into my heart. I didn't really feel any different when we prayed, so when they left my room, I prayed and accepted Jesus into my heart again. From the age of four to age seven, I was living with my sister and parents. All was well until a little after my eighth birthday. That August, I went to Tel High Camp, which is a Christian camp. When I went, I was terrified because I had to leave my parents for a week, but it was one of the best weeks ever in my life because I felt God speak to me for the very first time. He spoke to me when we were singing one of my favorite camp songs called Raise a Hallelujah. I was amazed by what God did. He changed my whole life. God is the Almighty God, and as most of you know, He can do all things. At the end of the week, I had to go home, and I was excited, but sad at the same time. I kind of forgot about camp until I turned nine, and then God did something about it. I forgot to mention that my whole life, 
I'd been praying for a baby cousin, and God finally answered my prayer and gave me not just one, but two baby cousins. One is a boy, his name is Gabriel, and he's one of the cutest babies in the world. Then came Savannah. She's a girl, and she's one of the best and cutest in the world also. My prayers have been answered. God also showed me he was real when I went to restore. I knew he was real because the people, because he spoke to me through worship when we were singing the blessing. So today, I want to get baptized, surrounded by my family and friends, to show my commitment to the Lord and honor him by publicly showing my faith and growing in him. Margaret's going to come up in just a moment, and uh, is going to be water baptized. However, she has some challenges physically that kind of prevent her from being able to step into the tank and be uh, brought back because of her back and some various other things. So uh, we, we all recognize and understand this is a public declaration of our faith in Christ. So we don't necessarily have to do it the way we've always done it. It's the faith statement that we're making, and that is what Margaret's going to do today. She's going to make that faith statement in a little bit of a non-traditional moment. We're going to celebrate with her at the same time. So I'm going to invite Margaret, come on up and uh, get water baptized. Margaret Yarmush. As a young child, I lived in a home with parents who loved the Lord and took us to church. I remember at the age of six, while attending Awana at Ebenezer Bible Chapel, asking the Lord into my heart. I also remember pe repeating that same salvation prayer many times over, just to be sure. Later, as a young teen, we stopped going to church. Suffice it to say that there was much heartache involved in that decision. At that point, I started to try to rely on myself alone, and in the process, made many mistakes over the course of many years. During those years, however, God continued to pursue me. No matter how far I went, He was the one constant. It was as if His hand was always on my head saying, This one is mine. Finally, humbly, I realized all the years of searching and fighting were just my soul being so hungry for Him and that only he would suffice. My life has never been the same since that realization. My constant prayer is that because of his grace and forgiveness, I can offer kindness and love to those I meet. Uh, Pastor Gary mentioned before, if there's anyone else here 
who would like to make this public de declaration right now is a great time. We have one little girl that's going to do that. She can go right over there, honey. Go, yeah, there you go. She's right over here. And she's going to get water baptized in just a moment. If there's anyone else who would like to be water baptized, I have t-shirts for you. You can get them on now or later. We can decide. Um, but if you would just meet me right over here in this corner, uh, we want to make sure this invitation is available for everybody right now. It's a great time to do this. So just meet me over here and we'll celebrate together. We have one more baptism coming. Anyone else will be baptized? Meet me right here.
do this all day, right? Any, anyone else? Does anyone else want to be water baptized? If you got butterflies in your stomach and they're going really, really fast, that could be Holy Spirit, uh, you know, butterflies. So just anyone else want to be water baptized? Okay. Has this been powerful or what? Amen. I know the service has gone a little bit longer, but I think there's a really good reason for it. Let's stand together and just celebrate right now and worship. Thank the Lord for what he has done and for the declaration that these people have made to Christ publicly. I think we can all sing this, huh? I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind away It was my tomb Till I met you There you go Oh, I was breathing but not alive All my failures I try to hide It was my turn Till I met you Sing it out You called my name Is that true for anybody in here? Yeah. And your freedom is all I know. Your baby. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you. Here we go. You call me. I think we all have the same story. So sing it together. I need a rescue. My sin is heavy. We can all say that, right? Let's sing. I need a rescue. My sin was heavy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of peace.
praise your holy name. Father in heaven, we glorify and honor you as well. All through the power of the Holy Spirit, we thank you so much for the blessings that you have lavished on us this day, Lord. The, the celebration of life, the celebration of eternal life in Jesus. What a blessing, Lord. Thank you for this family that gathers in your name. Brothers and sisters, arms around one another celebrating you. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we pray your blessing on everyone who is baptized. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would fill them, that they would sense you every moment of the day. And Lord, if I'm honest, there are moments of the day when I struggle to sense you. So when they hit that, Lord, I pray that you would remind them of your promises to never leave them, never forsake them, to always hold them dear, that their sins are not covered. Their sins are gone by the power and the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this day. And the whole church, in a rejoicing tone, said, Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The Lord is worthy of an applause. <laughs> Amen. Amen.